Reuters is reporting that the so-called free trade deal, the Trans-Pacific Partnership or the TPP, is back from the dead and its chances of passing are increasing. They say, quote, Chances that U.S. negotiators can bring home a strong trade deal with Asia-Pacific countries are now much better than 50-50, U.S. President Barack Obama said on Thursday. Obama said he was also confident the administration could make a strong case in Congress for a Trans-Pacific Partnership deal covering nearly 40% of the world economy. Quote, I'm much more optimistic about us being able to close out an agreement with our TPP partners than I was last year. It doesn't mean it's a done deal, but I think the odds of us being able to get a strong agreement are significantly higher than 50-50. Now, they don't mention this in the article, but is it likely the case that since the Republicans won in a landslide in the last election, that will help the chances of the TPP passing uh, and... Uh, lawmakers in the U.S. getting behind it? I think the answer to that is yes. Now, why is this so bad? This is an important conversation to have. Well, NAFTA, CAFTA, GATT, and the WTO, and all of the trade deals and trade organizations have led to the devastation of the American middle class and the American economy. Now, I don't want you to take my word for it. Let's just go ahead and look at the numbers. Here are the facts. We lost 50,000 manufacturing plants in the United States in just the last 10 years. 50,000. We also lost 5.5 million factory jobs. We have fewer manufacturing jobs today in America than we did in 1941. In 1970, 25% of all jobs in the United States were manufacturing jobs. Today, it's 9%. In July of 2000, there were 17.3 million manufacturing jobs in this country. Today, there are 11.7 million. 2000 was not that long ago. Even since just then, we've been slowly bleeding jobs. And actually, the word slowly doesn't even fit there. We've been quickly bleeding jobs. Trade relations with China also led to the loss of 2.8 million American jobs. In fact, the United States has lost an average of about 50,000 manufacturing jobs per month since China joined the World Trade Organization in 2001. So there's the reality about these so-called free trade deals that our government is so eager to get us more involved in. It's not really free trade. Let's call it what it is. Outsourcing. Let's call it what it is. The destruction of the American middle class. You know, when we talk about the golden days of economic expansion in the United States of America, what do you think we're talking about? We're talking about a time not only when Europe was in shambles after World War II, so they were rebuilding and we were rocketing ahead, but also we're talking about a time when we did manufacturing here and we had factory jobs here and we were exporting all around the world. Now we import. Now we lose jobs and we import. And the reason why we're doing it is because we want to send jobs to Mexico and China and Cambodia and Bangladesh so that we can spend 29 cents less on your everyday casual item. But it becomes a race to the bottom doesn't matter if you're saving 29 cents on a purchase if there's millions of people losing their jobs in the process. It's a race to the bottom. Why would you do that? And the reason why you would do that is because the elite don't care about the American population. They know that when they outsource jobs, what happens? They get rich. You know, if you would rather pay somebody in Mexico $5 a day to do what an American worker in a factory does for $35 a day plus benefits. You save money, you pad the bottom line, you make more profit, and everybody else in the United States of America gets screwed. People wonder, well, why is Detroit in such a bad situation? And I love how the conservatives blame it on Democrats. <laughs> it's not Democrats' fault. It doesn't matter who is in control uh, in the state and local governments over there. It doesn't matter. When you take all the jobs and you ship them overseas so that the people who own the companies can make more profits, 
Of course it's going to turn into a, a, a depressed society. Of course there's going to be poverty and crime as a result of it. If you never let the jobs leave in the first place, that wouldn't have happened. And now we can sit here today and look at the devastation that NAFTA, CAFTA, GATT, and the WTO have done to the United States of America. We can sit here today and look at this. And still, you want to talk about blaming Democrats, here's some real blame for Democrats. We can have a Democratic president, Obama, who says, yes, now let's do more so-called free trade deals. Let's lose more American jobs. Let's decrease the price of consumer goods by another 12 and a half cents. And the price of that will be losing millions more of American jobs. We're creating a new feudal society. We're creating a permanent low-wage working class, a permanent service sector where we all can't make enough money to survive, but the people at the top get richer and richer and richer. It used to, it used to not be like this. It used to be the case that you can't just ship American jobs uh, overseas. If you do, you get taxed to no end to the point where you don't want to send your jobs overseas. You want to create jobs here. Not only should we not do the TPP, we should roll back NAFTA, roll back CAFTA, get out of the WTO, and go back to what was called protectionism. People demonize protectionism today as if it's a bad thing. Oh, really? Protectionism is a bad thing? Would you not protect your kids? Please. Same thing they do with the idea of the welfare state. They talk about welfare in a negative way, a negative connotation. Oh, welfare queen. Really? Would you not look out for the welfare of your own kids? How did welfare become a bad word? How did protection become a bad word? You have to bring back tariffs, incentivize businesses to come back home, and punish them via taxes if they send jobs overseas. Because I want more, uh, I want Americans to have more jobs than I want people in Cambodia to have jobs. No, no offense to people in Cambodia or people in Bangladesh or people in Mexico or people in China. But I want my fellow citizens to have the jobs that they deserve because these are so-called American companies that were creating the jobs.